And the, the caller said, you know, I, I appreciate the show. I appreciate what you're doing. But uh, but Larry is something special. And I was like, well, good Lord, do you want to do a drive by in the studio while I'm here or, or what? But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, but <laughs> but anyway, uh, Larry, Larry, let me ask you this. OK, so you've left behind. Uh, I mean, obviously, a lucrative career as a nationally syndicated uh, radio show. It, it, do you want to put your policies to the test? Is this why, why did you decide, hey, I'm leaving radio. I want to give this thing a, a, a shot running for governor of California. I know the timing is good, but do you have a desire to put your policies to the test? You know, Carl, I, I get asked that question a lot. And I don't want this to sound, to sound arrogant, but I love the series, the Die Hard movies with Bruce Willis. And one of the ones he was in, it wasn't one of the good ones, I think it was the third or fourth one, wasn't particularly good. But he's in the car, and he's saving the world. Uh, and somebody says to him, why are you doing this? What, what makes you do this? And he said, because somebody has to. And I'm looking at the guys that were running against Gavin Newsom. I didn't think they could win. I know that I could bring something to the table. I've been talking about issues of crime and rising homelessness and the rise of the cost of living and the fact that people are leaving California for years. And I really do think I have something to, to, to say about it. And I felt that I, have a, I had a moral... I'm a deep man of faith, a spiritual, and a patriotic duty to do this. And you're right. I'm not doing it for money. Obviously, I'm not doing it for fame. Uh, in fact, I'm losing money. Uh, and, you know, you always run the risk of somebody being able to say something about your reputation that might leave it, leave it sullied forever. I knew that I was doing all of that, but I really felt I had no choice. I felt I would regret it, and I would not be, be proud of Larry, would not be happy with myself. My mom and my dad looking at me from heaven would not be happy if I had uh, dodged this because I just didn't want to put myself through it. So I felt I had no real choice, Carl. I really, I really felt that way. Larry, I got to tell you, in that response that you just gave, I, I got a feeling that you've just inspired a countless amount of God knows how many people to, to chase their goals and in uh, and, 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 and their dreams. All right, let's just get back to the topic at hand. Top five issues that uh, Larry Elder feels needs to be the ones or, or, or the ones that'll, that'll help the people of California. Well, first of all, uh, when I become governor, to the extent that there are still mandates uh, for state workers to be tested once a week and wear face masks at work, uh, I'm going to repeal those mandates before I have my first cup of, uh, cup of tea. I think they're anti-science. Uh, you know, again, I'm not anti-vax. I've been vaccinated. I'm older. I've got a comorbidity. Uh, and contrary to the ads that my opponent has been running, I'm not anti-vax. But I do believe a lot of people, for example, uh, followed the advice of Kamala Harris uh, and Joe Biden when they said if Donald Trump told them to take the vaccine, they wouldn't take it. The vaccine was done real fast. The FDA approved it on an emergency basis in less than a year. The average vaccine takes about five years. Uh, and a lot of people just don't want to take it. I was at a campaign stop in Palm Desert. And I went into a coffee shop, Carl, and I was waited on by a very uh, charming young lady. And I noticed that half the people at the wait staff were wearing masks and half of them weren't. And I asked her, what was the policy in this store? And she said, well, my boss allows us to wear a mask or not wear a mask. I said, you've been vaccinated. She said, no. I said, may I ask why? And she smiled and she said, well, you may ask, but I don't have to give you a reason why. I just choose not to. I mean, isn't that America? Didn't Thomas yeah. Jefferson warn against trading freedom for public safety? Uh, and I think that everybody in California now who wants to be vaccinated, has been vaccinated, and poor people can be vaccinated for free. A lot of people have made the decision not to be vaccinated, and I think we ought to respect that. Why do you uh, – okay, other issues as well. I know you're – listen, obviously you made some homeless people upset today, uh, it looks yeah. like. So that's, a, that's yeah. a big issue for you. Why don't you speak well, on that it, for a sec? Right, and many of them have mentally ill, mental Ill problems. Uh, some of them are schizophrenic, meaning a danger to themselves or to others. And I think we demonstrated that. This problem has gotten worse and worse and worse under my opponent. When he ran for mayor in 2004, he said, in 10 years, I'm going to clean up the homeless problem in San Francisco. That would have been 2014. Have you been to San Francisco lately? The problem has gotten worse. And that's because I call it the homeless industrial complex. Uh, homes are being built at substantially higher cost than would be built if the private sector built them without dealing with the underlying reason why people are, ho are homeless in the first place. And that's largely because of mental illness and because of substance abuse. These people need to be treated. And government has proved itself to be ineffective. We need to involve nonprofits, community activists, churches, synagogues, and mosques. And once that's done, they need to have low-cost housing. I talked to Dr. Ben Carson the former HUD secretary, and he told me in the waning days of the previous administration, uh, they had a plan to use large areas of federal property and build small housing at a fraction of the price uh, that they're building housing right now under this administration, and we'd have somewhere to put people once they've been treated. This problem can be solved, not right away, but over time it can be solved, and I'm going to work to solve it.
Were you were you shocked at all by uh, and by the way, I think what we saw today on display is a straight consequence of Gavin Newsom's policies, quite frankly, whether it comes to homelessness and Gascon as well. Homelessness, crime, the fact that people could feel so secure and safe attacking a, a, a gubernatorial candidate uh, or trying to at least is is is, is extremely bothersome. Um, and, and, and this is this is crazy. Guys, imagine what they would do to you, Larry Elder on camera running for the governorship uh this is one of the reasons i feel uh, uh, uh newsom has to go were you shocked um larry by your I, I mean literally you got in the race and the polls started rising pretty quickly for you i mean right. i literally right. remember going on air uh with dennis prager and i didn't know you were you were going to announce at the time and i said literally i think there's only two people that could win california and it's Prager or Larry Elder. And then, lo and behold, uh, you announced. But were you surprised by the, by, by the meteoric rise, if you will? Uh, frankly, I wasn't. I knew I had high name recognition. I've been on radio 27 years. Uh, as you know, Carl, we're on in every major market in, uh, in California, from Sacramento down to San Diego. And I've also been, been having a, a syndicated column. Uh, it's in the L.A. Daily, uh, Daily News. It's also in the Orange County Register and other newspapers in California. So I thought people knew me, and I figured that I would do well. But getting back to uh, what happened to me uh, when I was at Venice, you know, Barbara Boxer got mugged just a few days ago. Her That's cell phone right. was taken, taken in Oakland. And a few months before that, Gavin Newsom was attacked by a mentally ill homeless person. And had he not had his, his security detail, who knows what would have happened to him? How many people can travel with a security detail? And 20,000 convicted felons have been released early uh, since the coronavirus under Gavin Newsom. And many of them are violent offenders. And based on historical data, the majority of them are likely to reoffend. We have two soft on crime DAs. One, in this, one is in L.A., where they're not charging bad guys to the fullest extent that they could. And we have cashless bail, so if you have a court date, there's no consequences if you don't uh, show up. So we've reduced the chance of a bad guy being caught, being convicted, and being incarcerated. Uh, And surprise, surprise, crime goes up. This is not rocket science. The number one job of government is to protect people and property, and this governor is not doing it, which is why I'm asking people to vote yes to recall Gavin Newsom and go to electelder.com and throw a little something in the tip jar to make this a fair fight. Carl, he's already raised... $75 $75 million Whoa. from the Whoa. usual suspects, the teachers' union, the public sector's union, Hollywood, big tech, in order to defeat me. That's why he's bringing in Kamala Harris and Joe Biden uh, and Senator Warren, all of whom uh, are, are, are calling this a Republican takeover. Not a single one has uttered the magic word. Gavin Newsom has done a good job for California. That's what know, I want to hear any, any of them say. They never say that. <laughs> and, 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 you know, Biden just cut an ad. Uh, Obama, I'm sorry, just cut it. Yeah, ad. Obama. I, I don't think Biden could cut one, honestly. None. <laughs> anyway, Larry, can you stick with us or do you have to go? I can stick with you. Okay, all right. We'll be back. More Larry Elder.